Hello guys and welcome to the video. So today I'll be taking you through something that most of you have, have asked for and that is uh, column reinforcement. So we are going to uh, quickly see how to reinforce your column and uh, this is using Revit only, no add-ins, no extensions, no plugins. This is uh, using uh, the Revit Reba tool alone. So let's jump into it. So uh, to reinforce the column, we'll need to cut a section through the column. So we can use foundation plan for this. Under foundation, we'll need to select uh, any of our columns here and cut a section. So we'll be using section up here in the quick access toolbar. We'll change this to a cross section column so that we see our entire column. We'll cut a section here at the center of our column like that and just make sure the extents are just outside the column. So double click on your section to open it. Let's change the scale to one is to 50 and the detail level to fine. Extend our section a bit. This enables us to see our entire column. And there we have it. So we'll reinforce bottom going up. Let's start by cutting a detail section through our column from foundation to ground floor. So select section again, but make sure you change it to a detail section. I already have a detail section here, columns to enable you to cut through the cross section. You may open the detail section here in your project browser or just by double clicking on it here. Extend your crop region. You may also change the scale to a suitable scale and just do a detail level of five. So here is my column. I'll select the column, and simply click on Reba. I'll choose my stir up shape. I'll use 51 and change the diameter to around eight for my stir up. I'll change the work plane to parallel to work plane. and place my stirrup. You may notice that your stirrup does not have hooks. Don't worry, simply click on the stirrup and change the hook at start to 135 degrees and hook at end to 135 degrees. There you have it. You may now select your stirrup, change it from a single stirrup to maximum spacing to a spacing of your choice, e.g. 200. You can confirm this using your cross-section and you'll see your stir up there. Go back and place in now the main bars, select your column again, select river, change this to shape one, straight bar, also change the placement orientation. We can also change the diameter of the bar to around uh, 16 millimeters. The discretion is yours. Place this bar anywhere on top of the link. Escape twice. Select the bar and uh, change it to fixed number. You may do three, you may do two or four. The discretion is yours as the designer. I'll do three for now. Then select the three bars and simply mirror them on the other side of the column. So you'll have six bars now. 
check your cross section and you'll see your bars. So now we simply need to edit these bars so that uh, they have the right shape and they have the dowel up here. So to do that, simply select the bars in your cross section. The good thing about using fixed number is you just need to edit these and it will, you simply need to edit and it will edit uh, all the bars. So um, if these bars and these bars are the same, I would advise before you mirror, you edit these bars first, then mirror them to the other side. So for now, I'll just select these bars and delete them. Then I'll edit these bars and mirror them after I finish editing them. So how do we do this? Go back to your section, select your bars, edit sketch. So feel free to use any of these sections. Sorry. So if you get this pop-up, this is Revit telling you that you need to have a section which is parallel to the screen. Worry not, just cancel. Go back to your foundation where you did your section select your section and simply rotate it. I would advise you rotate a copy so that you retain this section too. So make sure you turn on copy here, place the center of rotation to midpoint of the column and simply click to rotate a copy of your section. So you can now open this other section. If you now select your bar, on this other section, you can now edit sketch without getting that pop-up telling you to choose another view, which is parallel to the screen. So here we can edit our bar. Here we need a, a lap, an overlap, which is usually about 50 of the diameter of the bar. The diameter of our bar is uh, 16 millimeters. So multiplied by 50, I would say about 800. So I would stretch this bar using the blue dots, the grips, and I would do a dimension here. This will just be a temporary dimension to guide us. I would select the bar, then change this dimension to 800. This will be my lap length. You can now delete that dimension. So Revit will want to do this, raise the bar instead of stretching it, which is okay. We'll just use the line tool up here and draw our hook here, which have a diameter for now. And then trim extend, use trim extend to corner TR to join the two. You can also use a temporary dimension here, this one, to adjust the length of this hook, maybe 200 or according to your discretion. And that's it. Simply click finish. And this hook should apply to the other bars. If we check out the other section, you should see that the hook has applied to all the other bars. If you check out uh, the, the mid section, if you hover your mouse, you'll see the hook has applied to all the other bars. So it's the quickest. The, the fixed number allows you to edit just one bar and all the three edit. Once you do that, you can now simply click on the bars. Instead of redoing them, if they're exactly the same on the other side, simply mirror, pick axis, and pick the center of your column as the axis and mirror it to the other side. Simply check your section and everything should be okay. So this is the first height from foundation to ground floor.
I'll just do a dimension here. Like that. Just so that we know which levels are similar. So that we don't need to keep redoing the bars if we don't need to. So up here, where we have ground floor to first floor, we'll need to do different bars because this is 2,500, this is 3,000. So I'll just come back, select this section and copy it. It's always easier to copy than to redraw. I'll use constraint, copy it there. And I'll have a copy, this section. Just double click to open it. Here it is. Then I'll simply select it and repeat the same process. Click on Reba. I'll choose my stirrup. Change it to appropriate uh, diameter. Make sure it's parallel to arc plane and simply place it. If it appears without the hooks, simply change the hooks here to 135 degrees, both at start and at end. Then you can do your maximum spacing, whichever spacing you prefer. Just constantly check on your section to make sure everything is okay. So you'll see the steer up here wants to tie to the slab. You can simply edit this using the grips, the blue triangles, so that it ties to the, ties to the beam instead of tying to the slab. The discretion is yours. I know sometimes you, some people tie to the slab. You can choose just by dragging your stirrup. Then you can finally do the main bars. You can do your main bars. Select your column, click on Reba again. Put in your main bars. Make sure you change the placement orientation and the diameter to whichever you like. Place your bar. Select it and do your fixed number. I'll do three again, just to maintain the three bars that I did in the bottom level. So with your bars in place, you may now go and edit them accordingly. So I'll go back to my section again. So remember, this is the section that allow, allows us to edit family because it's parallel to our work plan. Then I'll edit this bar. I'll start by editing the overlap here. Just by stretching this bar a bit, then doing a temporary dimension here. May now select the bar and change this to 800. So this will be the size of my lap. Then here, I'll need to add a kink here. So this kink depends on the barbell in schedule you're using. So I'll just draw it the way we do it here, the kink. I'll use the line tool. Just draw my kink here. I'll then simply use trim extend to corner to join this kink for my overlap. And there you have it. Simply finish using the green tick. There you have it. You might need to stretch it a bit. You can stretch it even after you finish your sketch using the grips. Yeah. There you have it. There you have your stirrups. There you have your main bars. So this has applied to all the other bars.
And now you may simply go. You may simply go to your section now and mirror these bars. If they're exactly the same, it's in the center of your collar and they'll mirror accordingly. Check your section. Make sure that everything is fine. So now in my in my case, only this level, foundation to ground floor, is different. If you check ground floor to first floor, first floor to second, second to third, and that to top, they are all the same. So instead of redoing all these rebar, it's easier to just copy. Simply select your stirrups, use your control key on your keyboard and select your main buzz. Then simply use the copy tool. Make sure constraint is on and multiple is on. Then copy from floor to floor. This is because my floor to floor height is the same. So I don't need to redo these bars. So the only bars I need to edit now are the bars at the top level. Since they don't have a dowel, they'll just have a hook. So I'll simply select this edit sketch and add my hook here. Whichever length, the discretion is yours. Select trim extend to corner and join this. Use the temporary dimension to ensure your hook is the right length. And I'll do the same. I'll finish this. And I'll do the same for this other side. Or just to maintain the same bar, I'll just cut a section here, a detail section. Open this section. Or it's easier again to copy the existing section here and just copy it up there. It's easier to do that. And then I'll just select the bars that I have edited. Go to my section, I delete these. Select the bars that I've just edited and then mirror them. Pick axis using the center of my collar. If I go back to my section again, now these two bars are similar, exactly similar. If you use sketch riba, you might not get it exactly the same, but uh, depends on the rounding of settings that you've done in your reinforcement settings. Yeah, but it's better to mirror. These assuming all your reinforcement are the same. And then the other good thing about copying is uh, if your reinforcement has a different diameter, you'll simply need to select it and change the diameter here. So assuming at the top here, we have 16s instead of 12, I'll just select, change this to 16, which is easier than sketching again. Change this to 16, uh, from 16 to 12. And if I still need to change the number, I'll just change the number here to say two, and also here to two. So it will be easier to edit the copied bars instead of sketching the bars from scratch again. And that's it. You have a fully reinforced collar. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe and like for more.